Spider-Man is everywhere. Comic books, toys, clocks, movies, costumes, kitchen appliances, video games, even cereal. That's right, cereal. So it was inevitable we'd get a Nintendo 64 game appropriately named Spider-Man. Yeah, they weren't kidding around about that title. No revenge of this, return of that. No, it's just Spider-Man. So when you first begin, you're presented with eight different things to choose at the main menu. First there's the actual game, then there's options where you can adjust settings and whatnot, then there's also training when you're really bored, and gallery and records. In gallery you can view comic books you've collected in-game, but you can only look at the covers of them, which is like a big F U to the dedicated fans. And then there's special mode, which opens up to a different menu, and you can look at other things you've collected, like costumes. What I like about it, too, is that you can look at the different characters' models, like the people who made it were so proud of their work, they let you look at blurry, deformed comic book characters. So about the game itself, well, it's okay. The graphics aren't overly complicated, you can still punch, kick, move around, shoot webs, and of course swing on webs. Sometimes the controls are unresponsive, like maybe you'll jump off a building to swing across a gap when all of a sudden the R button just decides to quit on you, and it just looks like Spider-Man committed suicide. Anyway, the story is average comic book fare. Spider-Man is framed, chased down by the cops, and forced to investigate. Overall, the game stages offer up enough variety to keep the game new and fresh. Sometimes you'll have to stay sometimes you'll have to save hostages, and sometimes you'll have to have a time limit to complete a certain task. But then there's those chase levels where you'll have to chase down a villain after they attempt to kidnap your girlfriend, Mary Jane. Sometimes you'll see a building, swing to it, and find that the kidnapper is in the opposite direction. And if you get too far away, you have to start all over. It just gets tedious, and these guys seem to fly through the air, building to building. So when you fail to catch up so many times, you're just like, screw Mary Jane, because these camera angles are just terrible at times. The graphics aren't bad for the N64, everything's in their primitive blocky shapes. But the sounds, oh, jeez, the sounds. Yeah, some of the voiceovers are okay, but some of them are just laughable and reused way too much. Like when Venom says sorry to a lady after knocking her over. And I swear, in this one cutscene, the same recorded voice was used at least twice, and the cutscene was about 30 seconds long. The only thing good about the sound is the narrator voice, which appears to be done by Stan Lee himself, which is just awesome. If you call yourself a Spider-Man fan, then this game is worth it. It's decent enough to enjoy, and despite its flaws, it's fun enough to replay. Keep moving. 